In this video, I'm going to be doing a long needed update of one of my most popular and also one of my oldest videos, the lysosomal storage diseases. I actually up uploaded the original lysosomal storage disease video four years ago and wow, time has flown. And in that time, we've learned a lot about new high yield information that gets tested all the time on the lysosomal storage diseases. So because of that, I'm gonna update the original lysosomal storage disease video. And in this video, we'll be doing the 2021 lysosomal storage disease update. This is brought to you by Dirty Medicine. Before I get into today's video, let me tell you about a new Dirty Medicine membership that I'm rolling out on my channel. So as many of you saw, I recently deleted my Patreon page. And on that page, I was collecting financial support for the people that really wanted to give back to my channel. And in lieu of Patreon, what I'm now doing is accepting members. So if you wanna become a Dirty Medicine member, how that works is you click either join, as you see in this screenshot, on my home page of my channel, or in the description of any of my videos, you'll click the first link which says support, and you sign up to be a Dirty Medicine member. Once you're a Dirty Medicine member, what that means is that in exchange for providing secure monthly support of my channel financially um, for $4.99 a month, you get some cool perks. One, anytime you comment anywhere on the channel, there's gonna be a little Dirty Medicine logo next to your username. So everybody on the channel is going to see that you're a Dirty Medicine member, that you support the channel, that you value free medical education, and that you gave back. So it's gonna make your comments um, on my channel stand out from the rest. The other thing is that on my community tab of my channel, I'm going to be polling members only. And in those polls, it'll say, which of the following topics do you wanna to see for the next video? And only Dirty Medicine members who are signed up are gonna be able to vote. So if you want your voice to be heard and to decide the topic of the next video, or if you want to have the cool Dirty Medicine logo next to your name, your username, whenever you comment, or if you're just looking for a way to give back and support my mission to provide quality free medical education for graduate health professionals in the across the world, then please, 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 I humbly and respectfully implore you to sign up and support my channel. Now, today's video is all about lysosomal storage diseases and I told you guys that I'm going to do a major update from the video that I uploaded four years ago. So we're gonna go through these one at a time. I'll tell you in, in a very succinct way what the pathology is, um, all the associated findings, and then you'll get a one sentence mnemonic for all of these lysosomal storage diseases, which will be the only thing you need to memorize to get 100% of these questions correct on USMLE or Comlex. So let's get started. We'll start with Fabry disease. Now, the way that this is going to work for all of these lysosomal storage diseases is that there's some type of enzyme deficiency, and because that enzyme is absent or deficient, there's an accumulating substrate, and then there's clinical findings, right, or, or histopathological findings, and we're just going to list them like this. So for Fabry disease, the enzyme deficiency is alpha-galactosidase A. Because that enzyme is absent, the accumulating substrate is ceramide trihexazide. Very, very high yield findings include hypohydrosis, angiokeratomas, renal failure, and peripheral neuropathy. Now, the way to remember this is the following mnemonic. My favorite activity is making a ceramic galaxy. I'm sorry to keep harping on it. What does this tell you? Favorite, or favorite, if you will, reminds you that we're talking about Fabry disease. Ceramic is the cerama the, in the ceramide trihexazide. Galaxy, the gala part reminds you of alpha galactosidase. And sorry to keep harping on it, H-A-R-P should remind you of hypohydrosis, angiokeratomas, renal failure, and peripheral neuropathy. So my favorite activity is making a ceramic galaxy. Sorry to keep harping on it. The next disease is Gaucher disease. In Gaucher disease, the enzyme deficiency is glucocerebrosidase, which causes the accumulation of glucocerebroside. Not too bad. The findings are osteoporosis. You need to know that this is the most common lysosomal storage disease, that you get gr a gross femoral head, and you'll see why I'm phrasing it that way, but that's an avascular necrotic femoral head, and the presence of what are called Gaucher cells, or they might be phrased as lipid-laden tissue paper cytoplasm cells. You might see either of those terms. 
And what you see up in the corner of the slide is an image of the Gaucher cell. So these are cells that are said to have, quote, tissue paper cytoplasm, and that's because there's just lipid deposits all over the cell. Now, how do you remember this? Well, the mnemonic is that in a crying voice, you want to say, oh my gosh, he's such a bro. Now, what does this tell you? Well, first, the reason that it's in a crying voice is because you need to remember that there's tissue paper cytoplasm. So you use tissue paper or tissues to wipe your tears. And that's why you say this mnemonic in a crying voice. Now, oh my gosh, OMG, or oh, oh my gosh, is there for A, to remember about Gaucher disease, but the OMG stands for the O in osteoporosis, the M in most common lysosomal storage disease, and then the G is just gosh, um, as well as gross femoral head. Okay, so that G doubles as gosh and gross femoral head, which is another way of saying avascular necrosis of the femoral head. And then bro will remind you of the enzyme and the accumulation. So glucoserebrosidase and glucoserebroside. All right, so that's Gaucher disease. Oh my gosh, he's such a bro. That's how you remember this one. Let's talk about Tay-Sachs disease. Tay-Sachs disease is really high yield, not necessarily because of the disease itself, but because you need to differentiate it from Neiman Pick, and they're very, very similar clinically. The enzyme deficiency for Tay-Sachs is hexosaminidase A. The accumulating substrate is GM2 gangliocide. The findings is that you're going to have a cherry red spot on the macula. It's very high yield. You have what's described as onion skinned lysosomes, and there is no hepatosplenomegaly. And that, that, the absence of hepatosplenomegaly will be differentiated with Neiman Pick. It's very important. Now, how do you remember Tay Sachs disease? Well, you want to remember a gang of six small Jews. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, why, why Jews? Well, Tay-Sachs disease disproportionately affects Ashkenazi Jews. And that's just a high yield factoid that you need to know. But as far as the rest of that mnemonic, GANG, G-A-N-G, will tell you about GM2 gangliocide. Six is hex in hexos aminidase A, right? Hex, the prefix, has something to do with the number six. And the reason that they're small Jews is because the liver and the spleen are small because there's no hepatosplenomegaly. Now, before I go to the next slide, another thing that I just want to point out is that any disease with a hyphen in the name also features a cherry red macula, because as you see, cherry red is hyphenated, Tay-Sachs is hyphenated. So it's just an easy way to remember that. Now, just like Tay-Sachs is hyphenated, so is Neiman Pick disease. And as you'll see in just a second, there's also a cherry red macula in Neiman Pick. In Neiman Pick, the enzyme deficiency is sphingomyelinase, and the accumulating substrate is sphingomyelin. The findings are that because it's hyphenated, Neiman Pick has cherry red, right? So Neiman Pick has a hyphen, cherry red has a hyphen, so Neiman Pick disease features a cherry red spot on the macula. Neiman Pick disease has what are referred to as foam cells, or you might see it written as lipid-laden macrophages, okay? So lots of different cells to keep in mind for all of these different diseases, but for Neiman Pick disease, you'll get foam cells. And the most high yield thing about Neiman Pick, when you contrast it to Tay-Sachs, is that yes, there's hepatosplenomegaly. So the mnemonic for Neiman Pick disease is that you pick your nose with a big foamy sphincter. Right, And instead of saying finger, we're saying sphinger. So pick reminds you of Neiman pick disease. You're picking your nose with a big, because the liver and the spleen are big, because there's hepatosplenomegaly. Big foamy, because you have those foam cells or those macrophages that have lipids all over them. And sphinger for sphingomyelinase and sphingomyelin. And sphinger sounds like finger, and you pick your nose with your finger. So pick your, your nose with a big foamy sphinger. That's Neiman Pick disease. And then again, Neiman Pick, hyphenated, cherry red, hyphenated. All right, next we've got crab disease. Crab disease has an enzyme deficiency of galactocerebrosidase. The accumulating substrate is galactocerebroside. Findings are going to include globoid cells, oligodendrocyte destruction, and optic atrophy. Now, a couple of high yields here. One, you need to recognize the picture of a globoid cell. And that's what it looks like. But the mnemonic here is that the glob of gooey crab meat is out of this world, right? Who doesn't love crabs? Who doesn't love crab meat? And when you crack open those crab legs or the shells, however you like to eat them, you want to grab that 
big glob of crab meat. You know, anyone who's eaten crabs knows that sometimes you crack it open and it's all that disgusting yellow crap that's not really good. But you're looking for that glob. You're looking for that globoid cell. So the glob of GUI, G-O-O, for globoid oligodendrocyte destruction and optic atrophy, crab meat, crab for crab disease, is out of this world. And world kind of reminds me of galaxy and the gala is galactocerebrosidase and galactocerebroside. So the glob of gooey crab meat is out of this world. I'm going to put the next two on the same slide because Hunter and Hurler syndrome have a lot in common. And I think the way to approach this is just a color code to help you see the differences here. So everything for Hunter syndrome is in blue. Everything for Hurler syndrome is in red. And all of the features that they share or overlap are in purple. So the enzyme deficiency for Hunter syndrome, it's iduronate 2 sulfatase And for Hurler syndrome, it's alpha 2 iduronatase As you can see, uh, somewhat similar sounding, but there is a subtle difference. The accumulating substrate for both of these two syndromes is dermatin sulfate and heparin sulfate. So it's both of those um, accumulating substances. Findings. So for both, you're going to see gargoyalism and airway obstruction. But in Hurler syndrome, you see corneal clouding. And in Hunter syndrome, you see behavioral aggression. Okay, so the way to, to memorize this, the mnemonic here, is X marks the spot for the hunter. So what does this tell you? Well, a couple things. One, X reminds you that for hunter, it's X-linked recessive. And that's very, very unique. And you need to remember that. It's high yield. The other thing that you want to remember is that if you look at this image, imagine this hunter putting that gun up against his skin or against his derm a tin sulfate, right? So it's just another stupid way to remember the accumulating substrate. The other thing to remember is that Hurler syndrome has corneal clouding, but Hunter syndrome has no corneal clouding, which makes sense because if a hunter's cornea was clouded, he wouldn't be able to hold that gun up to his eye and take aim. So no corneal clouding for the hunter. And just, I guess by nature, it should make sense to you that hunters are perhaps more aggressive people than non-hunters. So in hunter syndrome, you see behavioral aggression. So that's hunter syndrome and hurler syndrome. Let's wrap up the updated lecture today with metachromatic leukodystrophy. Now, four years ago, when I, up, when I uploaded that original video, I didn't include metachromatic leukodystrophy. And the reason I didn't was because at the time, it wasn't a really high yield uh, lysosomal storage disease, but I guess over time it has become one. And you know, I have to ponder for a second and wonder if maybe the test writers out there were checking out my channel and they said, hey, dirty, you don't have this one here. We're going to get those med students. Ha 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 ha. Ugh, bastards. All right. So metachromatic leukodystrophy, the enzyme deficiency is aryl sulfatase A. The accumulating substrate is cerebroside sulfate. And there's a couple unique findings. One is um, demyelination, and that occurs centrally as well as peripherally. And then you'll have ataxia, dementia. You can get some psychotic symptoms in here. Um, you know, neuropsychiatric symptoms is the way it'll be phrased. But generally speaking, it's demyelination, ataxia, and dementia. Now, what's the mnemonic here? Well, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, if you're a huge nerd like I am, this is actually a Pokemon uh, mnemonic. So if you never watched or are familiar with Pokemon, then I apologize. But the mnemonic here is that Metapod is a real broken Pokemon, okay? Metapod, the meta, reminds you of metachromatic leukodystrophy. And Metapod is a real for aryl sulfatase, bro for cerebroside sulfate. So Metapod is a real broken Pokemon. But really the beautiful thing about this mnemonic is that, I mean, look at Metapod. He can't walk, so he has ataxia. He can literally only say his name if you've ever watched the Pokemon show. So he has dementia. And what is demyelination? Demyelination is loss of the myelin sheath. And Metapod, literally, his only thing that he does is shed his skin and evolve into a beautiful butterfly. So he literally demyelinates. That's his role in Pokemon life. So the mnemonic here, Metapod is a real broken Pokemon for metachromatic aryl sulfatase cerebroside. And then if you just think about all of the features of this stupid Pokemon, which I always wanted to get to level 10 as fast as possible. He's just a, a toxic, demented, demyelinating little green guy. But that's it for this update on the lysosomal storage diseases. I want to just take a moment again to thank everybody who has supported and followed my channel over the past four years. I had a chance to reflect on the growth of the channel since I'm doing my first update 
on a video that I uploaded four years ago. This It's absolutely crazy. Um, but if you want to give back and support me because I'm going to be around for many, many more years, please consider joining my YouTube membership to give back. Thank you and good luck.